David Pascal. Uh, Coach Jimmy Hams with the Sports Radio in Knoxville. How would you rank these traits in a quarterback? Accuracy, mobility, intelligence. Well, I think the main thing you say intelligence, um, a lot of people throw that around with the quarterback. Uh, for me, it's less about a, a GPA or a test score, more about how quickly can they process what they're seeing and make decisions. So if that factors into intelligence, that is the absolute key for a quarterback. Can I see what I'm, what I'm getting from a defense? Do I know what I'm supposed to do? Can I process that and make my decision? After that, it is accuracy. Because if I know where I'm supposed to go with the ball and I can't get it there, it doesn't do much for me. So accuracy is huge, and that stems from your feet all the way up to your head. Do I get my feet in position with my hips, with my shoulders, with my eyes, so I can see everything, drive the football, make an accurate throw? And then uh, the mobility is, is big, especially in this league. Um, there's guys that can get after the quarterback here. We've all seen it. Um, they get paid really well to do it on Sundays. So uh, if you can get out of the pocket, that's an absolute plus. But those first two are, are, are big time in any offense, but especially this offense where we're going to put a, a lot on our quarterback. Joey, David Pascal down here at the Chattanooga Times Free Press. It says in your bio that you went into the private sector in 2017 and 18. Can you talk about what you did those two years? And, and I know Dabo Sweeney did the same thing early in his career. I was just kind of wondering when you leave football, do you, do you always have, have it in the back of your mind that, yeah, I want to get back in it? Yeah, um, there were some things in, uh, in my personal life I had to handle. Um, respectfully, right now, I won't dive into all that. But... Um, the whole time I was out, I, I knew I wanted to get right back in, came in. Um, Coach Heupel brought me right back to UCF, hit the ground running and, and never looked back. It's, you know, we're a football family. That's what we do. Um, we love it and we're excited to, to be here. Gustavo, then Luis Fernandez. Gustavo Tomazelli, WTK Volunteer Radio 90.3 The Rock. Coach, have you watched any film with the quarterbacks available at Tennessee and if you, you know, Harrison Bailey was the starter last year, what are your thoughts about him? Yeah, um, I've watched all the quarterbacks that are on campus right now. Um, they're all their throws from the past two years. Um, we have a bunch of, of, of talent here. There's guys that can rip it all over the field. There's guys that have played a lot of football, which is um, a good thing. There's, there's not a solidified starter at this point. Um, I've told all the guys that they all know that. Um, but I'm excited to, to develop this young talent that we have here. And, and see if we can't make it as good as it can possibly be. Uh, Joey, Lewis Fernandez, WBIR in Knoxville. Uh, you're someone who, it seems like you've followed Josh just about every single stop he's made. What has your relationship been like with him? And during that time, how have you seen his offensive scheme evolve? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I played for Coach Height uh, at Oklahoma. Then I worked with him there, and we've been together the whole whole rest of the way. You're absolutely right. Um, he's grown so much in his offense, and, and that's what I, I love about working for Coach Height is he's not dug into I'm going to do this, whatever the talent is, whatever we have, whoever the players are, we're doing this, and they're going to fit it. He molds his scheme. He molds what he has to fit his players, and, and that's a testament to him. Now, we have our base stuff that we love and, and we're going to do, but – he does a really good job of, of designing plays, designing an offense, designing a strategy to fit who is our guy, who are our wideouts, who is our back, what is our O-line, and then let's make them as good as they can be and put them in the best possible position to be successful because that is our job. Um, we teach, that's what we do, but our job is to make sure those guys can go out on Saturdays and be successful. Patrick Brown, then Mike Wilson. Patrick Brown from Govals 247. Joey, I've, I've heard this offense sort of described as, as quarterback friendly. Uh, you said a couple of minutes ago that you guys put a lot on the quarterback. So uh, would you agree that it's, it's a quarterback friendly offense or do you think it's maybe uh, more complex than, than maybe some people think it is? Uh, <clears throat> I would say quarterback friendly and in, in, we're going to let you rip it. We're going to let you rip it all over the field. We're going to put a lot on you and to me, I would say that is quarterback friendly because we're not going to hold your hands. We're going to teach you. We're going to mold you into the best that you can be. And then we're going to turn you loose to go play ball on Saturdays. Um, we don't make guys play scared. We don't make them afraid to make mistakes, go out there, cut it loose, but we do put a lot on them. And, and in recruiting, that's a big thing for us. We we're very upfront with that. And we want guys that think that is an awesome thing that there is going to be a lot on the quarterback, that it is going to be on your shoulders to get us in the right play, to get the ball to the right spot. 
So in that sense, I would say it's very quarterback friendly and that you're going to get an opportunity to showcase your skills every Saturday. Yeah. Um, back in 2007, I guess it would have been, uh, you were in a quarterback competition under Coach Heifel at Oklahoma with, with Sam Bradford and Keith Nickel. What, what, what do you remember about the way that, that Coach Heifel handled a quarterback competition and how did it feel being one of the quarterbacks working through that under him? Yeah, um, main thing I can say is it was done fairly and that's all you can really ask for. That's all these guys have asked for. They, everyone wants to feel like they got a fair shake at getting on the field. And if you end up being the guy, great. And all through spring, that's what it was. All through fall camp, that's what it was. And then they made their decision after that. Um, we will handle it the exact same way here. Everyone's going to get a shot. We don't come in with preconceived notions. We've seen them play. You know, we've we've seen what we've seen. And, and then we're going to make a decision moving forward. But everyone's going to get an absolute fair shot to go be the guy on Saturdays. David Ubbin and Dan Harrelson. Uh, yeah, Joey, when you guys are uh, – sorry, David Ubbin with The Athletic. When you guys are, are teaching the offense, how do you do that to quarterbacks? I mean, is it in a book? Is it in an app? Is it whiteboard? What is that – if you're if you're a quarterback trying to understand this offense, like functionally, how do you learn it? Yeah, um, starting point for us is, you know, you always got to do formation splits. We are different than a lot of people like that. Um, then you got to teach the individual routes that we're working. So we have a frame of reference when we're speaking to each other. You know what I'm saying? I know that you understand what I'm saying. And then how everything groups together protectionally to your run game. What are my run game rules? What are my protection rules? And you just build from the very beginning of splits, formations, individual routes. And then how does it all group into the full scheme of the offense? And then most importantly, how does the defensive structure fit into that? Um, we're not just going out there blind and chucking it and hoping it works. We're going to have a reason for why we're doing everything that we're doing. So it starts with us, and then we work in how does the defense affect it, what's our response, and we move forward from there. Coach Dan Harrelson with Vols Wire of USA Today Sports. Uh, you, you mentioned your relationship with uh, Coach Heupel dating back uh, throughout your coaching profession now and then playing for him at Oklahoma. Just kind of talk about taking over the quarterbacks unit last year at UCF and now doing the same at Tennessee and just kind of talk about the trust that he has in you to take over a position like that that he's so accustomed to. Absolutely. Um, he is accustomed to it. That is his thing. That's his favorite thing to do is coach quarterbacks still to this point. Um, he trusts me because we've been together. I played for him. Like I said, we've been in the same meeting room for 13 years. Um, he knows who I am as a coach. He knows that we value the same thing in a quarterback and how the offense is instructed, how it's taught. Um, and he can trust that I'll be an extension of his voice in that meeting room. And he's still going to show up. He can't help himself. He loves going in the quarterback meeting room. He'll walk in there. He's got a lot more responsible responsibilities these days than he used to. But um, he'll never take his hand fully out of that quarterback room. And, and being a guy that's been with him for so long, I doesn't be, pose a problem to me at all. You know, he's welcomed in there, a guy that's done it at such a high level for so long. It's, it's a welcome thing in that room. Last two questions, Blake, then Jimmy. Yeah, Joey, I haven't installed this system before at, at other places. What have you seen maybe is the, the biggest challenge for, for quarterbacks and in, in trying to adjust and, and learn to this system? And, and what type of guys are, are maybe positioned to especially excel in a system like this? Yeah, the main thing for them is is a lot of systems will signal in or run in everything that they do. We don't do that. We put it, like I was saying earlier, on the quarterback that when you get a certain signal or a certain play, you got to know how you're communicating to the O-line, to the back, to the wideouts. It's on you to do that. And at first, that can be a little slow going because it's different. A lot of people haven't done it in the past. Um, but once they get it and they grasp it and they hold on to it, now they enjoy it because it is on them and they get to make decisions. So that's the main thing is getting them past that this is different to this is fun, if that makes sense. Um, so that's the main difference right there. The type of guy is the type of guy that, you know, likes to go out there and just cut it loose. If, if you need complete direction and on here, you go here, you go here, you go here. Maybe it'll be a little bit of a struggle because we like to let you have some parameters within the offense to go and make us right, like I was saying. So it's the type of guy that wants to go cut it loose, have fun, spit it all over the field, and doesn't need to be told exactly one, two, three, four, five, six. This is how you go through every single thing. Last question with Jimmy. 
Joey, Jimmy Himes again. Uh, there's some offenses where they like the underneath passing game, the short stuff, uh, dink and dunk. Do you feel it's important to stretch a field? Do you need a quarterback that can throw the ball downfield? Absolutely. Um, we like to, with our wide splits, we, we do push the ball vertically. Uh, we do a lot in the run pass game. That kind of takes over a lot of the shorter stuff for us. But when we're playing in these splits and, and we like to, to push it vertically, um, a guy that can stretch it and really put a lot of stress on the defense is a, is a big time attribute for this offense. Thank you, coach. Thank you.